When choosing a board for computer vision applications and projects, many engineers and makers tend to reach for the tried and true boards, including the Raspberry Pi and Jetson Nano families. However, these are quite large and draw more power than what's actually needed. That's where the HiMax WEI Plus board can help. It has a much smaller footprint of just 40 millimeters by 27 millimeters, along with a whole suite of sensors, including an onboard three axis accelerometer, which is the LSM 9DS1. It has two PDM microphones, you can see here on the back. And then finally, I think the crowning jewel is the 640 pixel by 480 pixel CMOS sensor, capable of capturing images at up to 60 frames per second. Now the microcontroller on board is the WEI Plus ASIC, which is the HX6537A, which has an ARC 32-bit architecture, two megabytes of RAM, two megabytes of flash, all clocked at 400 megahertz. And with support for TensorFlow Lite, this development board is an attractive offer for small, low-power projects that also require object recognition. So in order to start using this, we'll go and hop on over to Edge Impulse. Now, before starting this project, I went to the Edge Impulse page for the HiMax board and downloaded the firmware. Then after unzipping, we are met with this folder, which contains three flash scripts as well as the image file. So because I'm using Windows, I'll go and open that up, which opens a command prompt window and then flashes the image to the board. And now in the Edge Impulse dashboard, it's time to go and create a new project. So I will go and call mine HiMax. Uh, let's call it test, create a new project. And now we can see that it's time to start by acquiring some data. So we'll connect a fully supported development board by opening up a new command prompt window and then running edge impulse daemon. And this tool will connect to the HiMax board and allow us to get images from it uh, to the edge impulse cloud. So go and sign in, select my project, and start getting some images. So now that the board is connected, if we go into our devices tab, you can now see that HiMax shows up as the HiMax WEI Plus and has the built-in accelerometer, microphone, and two different cameras. And one of those is the lower resolution one. So now we'll go to data acquisition. We'll have HiMax. And then for labeling, we'll have four different objects to recognize. So the first one is a Raspberry Pi 3. Then we have an Arduino Nano. Then we have an ESP32. And then finally, a little benchy 3D printed object. So we're going to enter in the label for the first one. Let's call this one RPI3. And we want to select the camera. We'll just do the highest resolution one. And now place the object in front of it and start getting images. I have now finished capturing my data, and we can see that uh, we have 64 items inside of Studio. We'll want to move a few of these to the test set, and what that allows me to do is then after the model is trained, I can then run these in the model and see if it produces the correct result. So let's take a couple of these at random uh, for each type and just move them. Now looking at the test data, you can see that we have one none, two Benchy, two SP32, two Nanos, and then two Raspberry Pi 3s. Now we can go into Impulse Design. We'll have an image width of 128 and an image height of 128. We'll just squash it, and what that does is just resize the original image into the 128 by 128 pixel size. We'll need to add an image processing block, which will take the image data and then produce a feature from that. And then we also need to have a transfer learning block, which is what you use for images. And that'll take the feature and then output one of our five labels. After saving that, we can go to image. We have grayscale color depth, so we'll save that. And now we will generate features using that uh, block. And here's our data. As you can see, it's a bit scattered, which is not a good sign. Uh, so we can see that the ESP32 one is a bit all over the place, whereas we have the Raspberry Pi 3, the Nano, and then also none being a bit closer together. 
uh, so it should yield more accurate results. And then Benchy is also a bit scattered. So we can head on over to transfer learning. Set this for 20 training cycles, a learning rate, about one fifth the default. And then we can set a confidence rating of 50%. We have our input layer. Then we have a mobile net uh, model. And we can also choose from a couple different ones. Uh, but I'll just go with the default and then start training. Now the model has finished training. And we can see that we achieved an accuracy of 54.5%. According to the confusion matrix, uh, none was about 50-50. The ESP32 is a bit rough as well, um, as we saw from the feature graph. And here's the ones that it got correct versus the ones that were incorrect, such as the Nano and the ESP32. So overall, not too bad. Uh, it does use quite a bit of RAM and ROM uh, to store this model. And this is for the quantized or int8 version of it. Now here, if we go to live classification, we can bring up either the currently attached HiMax sensor or just do one of our test samples from before. So here's an ESP32 one. This one is most likely to not be correct. Although here it does identify it correctly with 54% confidence. And let's try one that should come out a bit better, which would be the Raspberry Pi 3. And you can see here that, interestingly, the ESP32 was chosen over the Raspberry Pi 3, although it was about a 50-50 toss-up. Uh, we can also try a different one. And here we see that I got it correct with a 78% confidence. Uh, you might be wondering, okay, how do you increase the accuracy from here? Well, the answer is to add more training data. And in the future, I might have you know 20 more images for every single label. And having a bigger data set means that the model has more to work with when training and allows it to be more accurate uh, when computing the weights for the various neurons. And now in the deployment tab, we can either create a library for any device, so C++, Arduino, or WebAssembly, or you can build a pre-built binary for the HiMax board or an OpenMV library that you can integrate with other OpenMV projects. So if you opt to go for the pre-built binary, it comes in a zip just like the acquisition firmware. So you just unzip it, run the flash utility, and then reset. And afterwards, you can run edge impulse, uh, run impulse that talks to the board and it'll then output whatever it classified um, in front of it. So a very convenient and very fast way to test out your model. For more information on this project, make sure to go to the Hackster project page. They'll be linked inside the description and go on edgeimpulse.com for more information and to test it out for yourself.